Woman, noun, the female human being, can be described as confident, strong, smart, creative, visionary, beautiful, leader, women who lead. Welcome to Women Who Lead. I am Dr. Ruth Allen Allison, and this is the program where we talk about women in leadership, women in all facets of life moving to the forefront and making a big difference. And I'm excited to have as my guest today, Sherry Shrallow. You got it. Uh, Sherry, that is a difficult name. I I love your name, but Sherry Shrallow. Sherry Shrallow. See, I got it. That's it. You said it twice in a row. And and it was and it's pretty good. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I love having you on the program because you came to the program by volunteering, by watching a program and said, you know what, I have an issue and I want to be on that program. And we've been trying to get you here for a while. Right. So what's going on with you? What's your passion? I love to help people figure out how to live a healthy life. And I came to that because of something that almost took my life. So you are, you are a... Uh, I'm a, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and and a certified professional coach in private practice here in Houston. And so you're doing that. You're going along and you, you're taking care of the social part of life and the, you're coaching people mm-hmm. and all of a sudden something happens to you. What was right. that? Well, I was in my office two years ago and I was getting packed up to go home for the day because I had a women's group to facilitate that night. And I was sitting on my couch talking to um, a father of one of my adolescent clients. And all of a sudden, this terrible nausea came over me. And I haven't thrown up since fifth grade. I'm serious. So that was really weird. And I said, what is happening? And then, at the same time, I broke out in a cold sweat from the top of my head down to the bottom of my toes. And I think I passed out on the couch. When I came to, and I don't know it was a minute or how long it took, I said to myself, I'm having a heart attack. And I called my husband, and miraculously he was in his office, and I said, Dale, call 911. He did, and they got to me in about five minutes. I was so out of it, though, I knew I had to get to the door to unlock it because I I knew that every moment counted to get me to the hospital. So I got on the floor and I crawled over and unlocked my door and they arrived. And before you know it, I'm in the emergency room at the hospital. Now wait a minute, everything's normal with you. Nothing was no abnormal. No symptoms. Nothing. The You're only healthy. Thi- well, I exercised every day. I ate what I thought was a heart-healthy diet. I was of normal weight. And what did you think was a heart-healthy diet? Well, at that time, I was taught, as most Americans are, that if you eat something like what's called the Mediterranean diet, that's low-fat, um, a little bit of olive oil, you know, don't eat too many sweets, that that was considered to be a healthy Which diet. Which is my favorite food, by the way, but right. continue. Right. So I get into the ER and I meet the cardiologist and I remember looking at him and saying, Doctor, please don't let me die. And he said, don't worry, we won't. So they take me up to the cath lab. And at that point, they want to see what's going on because they suspect that I was having a heart attack. And sure enough, I was. My right artery was absolutely blocked. But this is where the story could have gone terribly wrong and I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. All of a sudden, as they're taking this catheter through my groin and it's in that right artery, I decide at that moment to throw up on the table. Oh. I haven't thrown up since fifth grade. Okay. And what happened was the catheter then moved from my right artery and it dissected my aorta, which is usually instantaneous hemorrhage and death for most people. I think John Ritter died from that. You've heard of many celebrities that have died suddenly from a dissected aorta. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, the surgeon at the hospital was right there and was whisked in. On the way into the operating room, he said to my husband, Mr. Shrallow, get your family together. I give her about a 20% chance of coming out of this. It's very critical. So 
let's, uh, you got through that. I made it through. And, and how did you make it through that? He did, was it the, the, uh, the surgeon, the ability of the surgeon in, in that case? I was repaired at that moment. Okay. I had bypass surgery to, to, buy, to go around the artery that was totally blocked. And then I went into a rehabilitation program after being in ICU for 11 days. So about a month in a hospital in a rehab. And it just happened like that? Just but like that. We have to go back to, though, how did this artery get blocked? What have you mm -hmm. found out since? Well, I have been quite a student in the last two years. And what I found out is that even though I thought I was eating what I thought were the right foods, they are absolutely not the right foods. Okay, well, what are they? Okay. So let me tell you how I came to reading about this book that taught me what were the right foods. My sister worked at the Cleveland Clinic, and she said to this me, Sherry. This book is called, by the way, Reverse, no, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Right. Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Right. This is your your textbook. That so is the first book that I read that okay. my sister told me about because she worked with the author at the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Esselstyn. It's a very interesting story. This guy is a surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic who turned his career around into preventing heart disease through diet because he lost family members from heart disease at a very young age. So his plan is that you eat only foods that are fruits, vegetables, legumes, grains. No meat, no fish, no dairy, no eggs, no nuts, no avocados. You want to get your cholesterol below 150 and the bad cholesterol below 80. And you heart attack proof yourself if you can do that. Okay, now, this is something that I just opened this morning. This is a letter from my doctor. Okay. And I am very healthy. I, am, I always say I'm healthy as a horse. I just go in to get a checkup just because that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But I was very interested in reading this. Labs look good, except your cholesterol has gotten worse. Cholesterol goal is 130. Right. Your current level is 155. Mm -hmm. That's me. Uh huh. So Not bad. You're, so so you're, and he says redouble efforts to, uh, with diet and weight loss yeah. and exercise. That's right. So I'm like most people that we're talking to, or a lot right. of people that right. we're talking to, right? right? My cholesterol was 175 overall before my heart attack on statins. It is now 105, having been on this plant-free, whole foods diet for over two years now. I don't have to worry anymore about going back to the operating room or dying from heart disease. Now, you're a plant-based advocate. Yes, I am. An activist. Mm -hmm. So activist meaning that... Uh, you know, if I had a hamburger here, you'd probably snatch it out of my <laughs> Well, I, uh, more, on a, more on, a, uh, on a political level, sure. I'm an activist. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, we're going uh, to have to take a break here, but we're going to be back with okay. more of this incredible story when we return with more of Women Who Lead in a moment. This song was created with heartbeats of children in need. Find out how it can help frontline health workers bring hope to millions of children at everybeatmatters.org. Back now with Sherry Shrallow and more of Women Who Lead. And she is a plant-based advocate. And you are advocating that, uh, that people eat plant-based foods. Right. And you know why I'm advocating that? Why? Because heart disease does not have to exist in this country. Did you know that two-thirds of the world eats a plant-based diet and there is no such thing as heart disease? This is a disease of affluence. And we can do something about this. We can change what we eat 
to prevent and to reverse, even if you have heart disease. Your arteries will heal, just like it did when people used to smoke, and they would put nicotine into their lungs. When you stop doing that, you heal. Because the body, the body is a wonderful uh, creation. Absolutely. Right? Or invention, because, uh, you know, I, I, I believe it was made out of stuff that was already made. So, so it's wonderful, and it does heal itself. I noticed it the does. other day, I fell on my bike, and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that as soon as that happened, that, that, that white blood cells rushed to that area and said, let's go get them, let's go and protect her. That's right. And so the body is awesome in That's that regard. Right, right. Um, I don't know about giving up meat, though. I'm, I don't know if I'm an addict or what, but I really like steak. I really like chicken. I really like yeah. beef. So did and, I. But yeah. you know what? How I, did you I give would, it up? Because I wanted to live. When you're faced with a life-threatening situation where I should have died, I've been given a second chance to live. And so giving up those foods that, by the way, they are very addicting, oils, fats, our body craves them. But if you stop eating them, within 12 weeks, you won't crave them anymore. I would never eat that again, ever. I and I cook unbelievably. And I, speaking unbelievably. of cooking, cook, speaking of cooking, <laughs> I'm going to bring this forward because you cooked this for us uh, today. I did. So what is this? Well, this is one of the recipes that you'll find in Dr. Esselstyn's book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Mm -hmm. It is a banana bread that has no eggs and no oil, and it is scrumptious. And whenever I teach in the community, because I do a lot of classes on teaching people how to transition to a plant-based diet, we always have food because I can convince people through tasting. Yes, I'm, and we're going to taste this in a minute. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, we're going to taste that. What happened to your weight on this, uh, this way well, of eating? Well, first of all, um, I am at a normal weight. I have always been at a normal weight, but I will never have to worry about losing weight or gaining weight again. I eat so much. I eat such a variety of delicious foods, and I am a great cook. And I create recipes. I have a cookbook I put out that I use in my, in my classes. I have a listing of all the things you need for your pantry. So I make it easy for people. I'll go to your house. I'll show you what you need to put in your cupboard. I'll take you shopping at one of the local grocery stores and teach you how to cook this way. And you will love it. And you're, it's delicious. You're, you're pretty serious about this. This, this is has my actually mission. become a calling, a calling or a mission for it you. It is a mission. I will do this for the rest of my life because I believe that it's that important. And I will advocate on Capitol Hill, if I get the opportunity, that we start telling the American public the truth about what we need to do to prevent heart disease in this country. If somebody said to you, listen, drink the water in this country, 80% of you will be just fine. 20% you might get a little dysentery and cholera. Would we put up with that? No. No. Well, then why do we say that it's okay that 36% of the American public has heart disease when it doesn't have to exist? And that's what, that's what will continue to push me to talk about this and to advocate. Now, has your whole family gotten on the bandwagon with you? Has your husband My been husband this? has gotten on the bandwagon. He has been unbelievably supportive. My colleague at work has gotten on the bandwagon. She has totally trans transitioned to this way of eating. Now you've teamed up. You have a, a partner. That's my partner, Don Nelson. And you guys go around and you talk about this. We did. You a, teach people We did. It. We were at, at the Hope and Healing Center at St. Martin's Church in February of 2013 did a wonderful two and a half hour seminar, had a packed crowd, fed them, taught them, have been starting to teach people on individual level in my practice how to do this. So anybody who wants to do it, I'm here to help. And we have, uh, we, we're putting up your email address so yes. people can, uh, can contact you. Um, tell me something about, uh, we always ask people on this program, what's the best advice you've ever been given? My mother told me, never give up and do what you love. And I've always done that. I love being a therapist. I love helping people. And now I have this new passion. And I can see myself continuing to fight this battle because it saves lives. This is so interesting. And this is just really part of the essence of this program because here you are uh, going through something that's very tragic. 
and you, you made it through. You found the solution, and as many women do, not only women, but many men also, we should say leaders. Mm -hmm. And this is what I really think is so fascinating and wonderful uh, about women who lead, and that is that you would have this experience, and instead of just saying, okay, me, my four, and no more, you've taken it, and now it's, you're making it almost a movement. I am, I am. I, I saw this, this saying in a hospice home in Cleveland, Ohio, when I did social work there, and it said, impossible situations are often brilliantly disguised as opportunities, and I live by that. Something tragic is really an opportunity in our lives. It can be. And it, we're talking today about our diets, but really, that's the case with almost anything. It's true. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. If it, uh, uh, what's the statement that uh, if, it, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you better. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly there are a lot of things that uh, people who are watching our program right now may be facing that there's some things that maybe they can't do anything about except change their attitude. Mm -hmm. But there's something we can all do something about when it comes right. to our diet. We're not powerless. We have control over this disease and it can get better. Even if you have heart disease, Dr. Esselstyn's study with 18 severely ill cardiac patients 20 years after being on his diet are all alive and well with a reversal of their heart disease and no progression. That's an amazing thing to say. And this is a doctor who works in an established clinic. The Cleveland Clinic is world renowned and he is doing this work and he will do this for the rest of his life as well. And I thank him for doing this research and that I was able to find this book. And you're benefiting from it. I am benefiting from it. And now a lot of other people are benefiting from it because Absolutely. you are a woman who leads. And I want to thank you, Sherry Shrallo. I said your name three times already and I said it correctly. Thank you for joining us today. You're and welcome. I want to thank you for joining us uh, as well. Uh, take advantage of uh, what she's trying to teach us, and that is uh, that we can, we can live and eat right. I'm Dr. Ruth Allen Allison. Be back with more Women Who Lead in a moment. those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. We keep Houston working with more returns, more personal income, more community investment, more work programs, in fact, no institution does more for its students and its community than Houston Community College. HCC. Smart Decision. And we're back now with more of Women Who Lead. On this uh, part of the program, we're going to talk about the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Businesses Program here at HCC. It is uh, just a fine and incredible program uh, that the uh, college is involved in. And here we have one of our Goldman Sachs scholars. Her name is Pat Weiss, Patricia Weiss, with Texas Security Shredding. Yes. Thanks very much for Good being morning. here. You are one of the graduates, now an alumni, yes. of the Goldman Sachs program. So tell us about your experience in it. It was a wonderful opportunity, and Houston and HCC and the Goldman Sachs have come together to get, put together a wonderful program for small business owners to develop, to develop their companies. They, it's a, about a two-month process, about 11 classes, and they break it up into modules of learning, talking about you, your leadership styles, uh, your financials, your budgets, your strategic planning. Um, they look at all different aspects of your business and help you develop uh, what they call a growth plan. Um, it's a, Which is different than a business plan. Yes, and it's an extension of your business plan. And um, they provide uh, an exciting group of professors, of mentors, of and uh, they assign you advisors 
to meet outside of class to develop your program. So they're really focusing on your, your business and bringing the experts to the table to help you put together that growth plan. This sounds uh, more, this is a huge, it's more than a than a, an oil change, it's an overhaul. It's an overhaul. For your business, right? <clears throat> That's right. Tell us what was going on with Texas Security Shredding when you decided to apply to this program. Well, we were a three-year-old company and uh, we were struggling with getting our marketing right and developing strategic partners and that's one of the reasons that I applied to the program um, and I accomplished those two issues through the growth plan but even better than that was the the uh, business relationships that I made with the other business owners today we continue to network and help each other with our businesses it's a very strong program in bringing businesses together to help each other. I suspect there's some personal relationships that develop out of it as well. Absolutely. Because as a business person, people look at business people and they think, you have it made. You don't have any problems. You have a business, right? <laughs> no, not but right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a lot of issues. You're, you're a business <laughs> owner. And then, you know, but many times a business owner, I mean, the buck really does stop with you. It does. And there's a lot of issues that you can't discuss with your own staff members that you need that ex outside expertise to be able to manage and to change uh, to be successful in business. What would you say to a person who, is, uh, uh, who has a business that's three years old right now and they're in struggle? Every company at that age needs some extra coaching. Um, this uh, program is designed for business owners with income between 150000 to $4 million. And, of course, you can inc increase that by yes. going through the program. Right. And so we want to uh, tell our viewers to go to the HCC website and, and click on the uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 program and get a lot more information, get your business rolling the same way Pat has done. I want to thank you very much for being with us today. On it Women was my pleasure, Mary. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, and it's Ruth, but that's okay. Uh, we'll see you next time on Women Who Lead.